In honor of Juneteenth, we've been giving you coverage of the local connection Central Illinois has to the original Juneteenth celebration in Galveston, Texas, 1865. We began with the troops who were there in Texas. Yeah, we told you the story of Moffat Cemetery, where one of the men is buried. Today, Brett Brooks brings you the final story, where it all begins with one historic girl's fight for freedom. Brett? Amber and Tyler, Nancy Leggins' costly story in the court system began when she was just 13 years old in 1827. She was bought by a Pekin co-founder, Nathan Cromwell, whose wife Eliza named the city of Pekin. However, a loophole in the Illinois Constitution allowed her to be legally free. It's here where her story begins. That's a story of courage, courage and fortitude, of tenacity and, and, uh, and will. After her parents were auctioned off, Nancy was sold to different owners, including Nathan Cromwell. And after 1836, when Nathan Cromwell died, and when she was pregnant with her first baby, she had been sold on a promissory note to David Bailey, who eventually declared himself to be an abolitionist. Bailey, a Pekin store owner, hired Nancy to work for him. He doesn't hand over the money, but he... They write up a, a promissory note in the amount of $376.48. When Cromwell died in 1838, his estate sued for that debt in Tazewell County. And David Bailey hasn't done it because of one reason. Because Nancy again told David Bailey, her new master, said, by the way, I, I say no, <laughs> and it has to be voluntary. And David Bailey, because he's of an abolitionist family, says, okay. You're free then. When they lost the case, they appealed it to the Illinois Supreme Court. That's when Bailey hired Abraham Lincoln, who had a law office in Pekin. One of his arguments is Illinois law says there must be no, I mean, it's in the very Constitution. During the famous Bailey v. Cromwell and McNaughton landmark case, Lincoln argued Cromwell's estate never received Nancy's consent. Abraham Lincoln said, where is the contract of indenture? Where's the papers? showing that Nancy was ever anybody's servant at any time in her life. She's being passed from master to master, being sold by, for money. Where is the contract of indenture? Nancy testified in court that she always denied being a servant. That's when Lincoln gave one of his famous arguments. He questioned the judge whether the judge had proof that he was free. He even talked to Justice Sidney Brees, who was hearing the, the, the case. Said, Justice Brees, do you... Where, where is your contract of indenture showing that you're an indentured servant? Well, I don't have one. You're a free person, right? Nancy, where are, where are her papers? She must be free. And on July 23rd, 1841, Justice Brees ruled Nancy, who was only 23 at the time, was indeed legally free, along with her children and any future children she would have. 24 years later, one of her children, William H. Costley, joined the U.S. Colored Troops and was present in Galveston, Texas for the very first Juneteenth. Nancy went on to live as a free married woman and had eight children. She lived in Pekin for about 50 years before moving to Peoria. She's still buried at the now defunct Moffat Cemetery. She will be recognized along with 2,500 other people also buried there later this year on what will be known as the Freedom and Remembrance Memorial. Fun fact, the Abraham Lincoln mural on the side of Peoria County Courthouse is facing the last house Nancy lived in on North Adams Street here in Peoria. This book of Nancy, written by Carla Adams, is available at the Peoria Public Library if you want to check it out. Tyler, 